I'm here with Hanin Zorbi, who's a member of the Knesset representing the National Democratic Assembly. She was elected in 2009 and is the first woman to be elected to the Knesset uh, on an Arab uh, party list. Hanin, welcome to Chicago. It's wonderful to have you here. Uh, just a couple of days ago, on October 27th, you were in the city of Umm al-Fahim, which is a major Palestinian city inside Israel, when uh, right-wing extremists marched in the city and uh, there were violent clashes with the Israeli police who opened fire on uh, demonstrators. You were among them and you were injured. Can you say what happened, please? And actually, as you said, for the second year, uh, for the second time, a group of um, right wing, uh, um, also uh, adopting Kahana's uh, political uh, view and believing that Israel uh, is a Jewish state, this means that it uh, must be uh, clean from Palestinians and that this is the state of Israel must just uh, get rid from the Palestinians. They march into Imm al Fahim to send a message to the Palestinians there uh, that they are not welcomed and that it is not their homeland. Uh, and they are were demonstrating also against the Muslim, uh, the Islamic uh, uh, movement uh, because uh, the head of the Islamic movement, the northern branch, Ra'id Salah, also participated in the flotilla and they said it cannot be that Israeli uh, uh, citizens uh, support uh, the cause of the Palestinians and um, uh, are active in, uh, po in political struggle uh, against uh, supporting the end of occupation and supporting uh, the end of the siege uh, uh, upon uh, Gaza. So the Israeli uh, police was defending them actually. They were not defending the unarmed uh, citizens uh, versus the right wing, the violent right wing. Uh, they were defending the right wing and they also uh, were so violent towards the Palestinian uh, 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 the Palestinians in Emil Fahim and as you, you said, they began to fire and they have injured tens tens of uh, Palestinians. I was one of them. I was just two meters far from the Israeli police and uh, I have injured twice, uh, once in my neck and once in my uh, back. Can you describe what they fired at you? Because when we were talking earlier, you said that it wasn't um, rubber bullets. It was some kind of weapon you hadn't seen before. Yeah, I don't know actually. They are so creative in uh, just uh, inventing uh, new weapons and I don't know what is uh, what it is. Uh, I know that it hurts a lot uh, and uh, I know that they can just uh, using it uh, in order to to uh, injure people and in order to hurt uh, to hurt uh, citizens. I don't know. I, I, and, and, and I, I'm not familiar with this kind of weapons. And what can you just? But I, can, I just uh, issued a complaint uh, and I asked for uh, an investigation uh, to this uh, accident. Mm -hmm. And can you just describe very briefly the kind of injury or the kind of pain that? came from this weapon? I don't know. It's a, it's a kind of... Um, burning. Yeah, like a, a burning, burning sensation. It's with a 3 centimeter um, a, a, a 3 centimeter ball? Yeah. Oh, okay. And so it's three burning centim and it's hurting okay. and uh, it's still very, very uh, yani, uh, red, I don't know. So I, I'm really, I, I, I don't know, I don't want to know. I, I just think that my responsibility is to uh, um, ask for an investigation and to make the Israeli police accountable. It is not the first time. Actually, the Israeli police had killed 50 Palestinians during... 50 Palestinian citizens during the last 10 years 
no one from the Israeli police uh, hold accountable of its uh, uh, killing, and without without. Uh, uh, so there, there have been no, yeah, there have been no investigations. No investigation, and the, yeah, there have been no charges against anyone in those killings. Yeah, in, in October 2000, they killed 13 Palestinian citizens. Uh, when they demonstrate against Sharon entrance to Al-Aqsa. Uh, and during the last uh, 10 uh, years, they also killed 34 Palestinians on a separate and individual... Um, so 34 Palestinian citizens of Israel have yeah. been shot and killed shot by, and the police, by the and, police, and no one was no ever charged. charged. Yeah, no okay. one was ever charged. Um, the... One of the settler leaders, one of the extremist uh, Kahanist leaders who was leading the march in Umm um, al-Fahim, when he heard that uh, you were injured, he told Israel Radio uh, it was worth going to Umm al-Fahim just, just so you could be injured. And he said, she is our enemy. Why do you think Israelis like Baruch Marzal think that you and other Palestinians uh, are their enemy. They perceive all the Palestinians to be their enemy because they believe that uh, Israel should be a pure Jewish state and that there is no right for any Palestinians <coughs> to live there and uh, to have a national uh, uh, rights. And I think uh, that our problem is not just this uh, fascist crew, uh, groups. Our problem is the mainstream politics in Israel. The problem is that they are part of the Israeli uh, uh, legitimate political scene. They are not, even though quantitatively, uh, they are marginal groups inside the Israeli political system. But the values uh, they believe in uh, of a Jewish state is the values of everyone. It is it, the, their values reflect an Israeli consensus, mm. and this is the problem. My problem is not the right wing, the, the just the right wing. My problem is that Lieberman, for example, Avigdor Lieberman, Avigdor Lieberman, the, Lieberman the, the foreign, foreign minister, minister, he got 15 seats in the Knesset, which is 120 seats, and he is the f third biggest party in the Knesset and his views are legitimate and any law he suggests would pass in the Knesset and any law he would suggest would have majority in the Knesset. So we are not talking about a, a, a right wing which are delegitimate in the Israeli uh, politics. Even, even that this group of Marzel is a small group, but it re they reflect a consensus, a cons uh, values which most, the majority of the Israelis believe in. So this is the problem. You you were elected to the Knesset in the last election, and you've now been in the Israeli Parliament for about a year and a half. Um, based on your experience, do you think that Palestinian citizens of Israel, and there are about one and a half million Palestinian citizens of Israel, can achieve their democratic rights within the Israeli political system as it is today? We are 1,200,000 because we don't, you count don't count Jerusalem. East Jerusalem and the Golan Heights as an occupied territories. Uh, but uh, we demand a full national and civil uh, rights. And uh, as you know, I will give you some statistics before uh, uh, political analysis. Uh, 83 of our land has been confiscated. 83%? Yeah, 83% has been confiscated uh, Israel, uh, not to the benefit of a, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Jewish the, uh, uh, use, not for the public, any public uh, benefit. Israel didn't develop any Palestinian city or village since 1948, although we are 10 times more. 
So the pa the Palestinian population within has Israel grown has grown ten, ten times. times. In the same, and we're still in the same, not just in the same uh, villages and towns, in, uh, but after confisc uh, taking into consideration that Israel has confiscated out of these Palestinian villages and towns, 83 percentage of our so, land, but and it developed and it, it has uh, Israel has developed 600 Jewish city and villages upon the Arab uh, land. Do you understand yes. me? So, uh, our uh, percentage in the government sector, for as, an, as employees in the governmental sector, is 6.7 percentage, although we are 18 percentage from the society. Our percentage in the public sector, as employees, is less than 1 percent. Our percentage in the public, uh, uh, in, this is in the private sector, less than 1 percent. Percentage. Uh, our percentage in the pr uh, public one is two percentage. Our percentage in poverty is fifty percentage. What's the in, poverty in the rate among the Jewish population? Sixteen. Sixteen. So fifty percent among the Palestinians. The Palestinians and sixteen among the uh, uh, Jewish. Our percentage in the Israeli universities, although again we are eighteen percentage, is eight. So percentage. So we are underrepresented, uh, represented in every uh, um, uh, sectors in the and uh, we are over uh, represented in poverty in the prisons in the prisons in the Israeli prisons we are thirty five percentage. Uh, so uh, this is on the uh, civil uh, level. In the national level, for example, the, in Israel there is 24 laws which discriminate against the Palestinians. So we don't speak about de facto discrimination. We don't speak about policies of discrimination. We speak about concept of discrimination. We speak about also de jure. A, a discrimination in Israel, as I said, 34, 24 percent, uh, 24 laws legally discriminate. One of them, citizenship uh, law, which forbid any Palestinians from from returning back, and which guarantee any Jews an automatic citizenship. This uh, this law uh, forbid me from from marrying a Palestinian and continue living inside Israel. If I want to marry a Palestinian from the West Bank or Gaza or Syria or Lebanon, I must leave my homeland. I must leave Nazareth. I must leave the country. So this is, I think, the only state in the world which involve a new romantic decisions, which just uh, decide for you whom to marry and, and whom you cannot marry. Uh, for uh, Education law. According to education law, I cannot study my history. I cannot just uh, 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 study what happens in 1948. I cannot, uh, I cannot use the word in Nakba. Nakba the, the is word the... Nakba, the, the Palestinian catastrophe, catastrophe cannot be used, what happened in 1948, cannot be used in the uh, educational textbooks. It's, so, uh, according to the Israeli educational law, the aim of the education system is to reinforce Jewish values, Jewish character, and Hebrew culture. Mm -hmm. And nothing about the Palestinians. Nothing about the, the historical fact that Israel has expelled 85 percentage from mm -hmm. the Palestinians. That I am a majority, but I was, uh, that I am now a minority, but I was a ma majority. Mm -hmm. The Israeli students doesn't study that this is my homeland. Mm -hmm. So it is not so surprising to reach the Knesset and to confront uh, uh, and, and to see Knesset members who deny you your history and your identity. So uh, this is, uh, I, there is also a new uh, loyalty laws, mm -hmm. loyalty laws, which condition your citizenship, which condition your uh, rights, uh, with one condition that you must be loyal to the Zionist ideology. So, again, it is the only state in the world which uh, forces the citizen uh, what to believe, what values to believe, what political uh, uh, views to hold. 
I just have a couple more questions for you because we're almost out of time. Um, you took part in the Gaza Freedom Flotilla and you were on board the Mavi Marmara when it was attacked by the Israeli army in international waters on May 31st and you witnessed the uh, bloodshed which ended up with the killing of nine uh, people on uh, board that ship. And you challenged the official Israeli claims that uh, the soldiers had opened fire only in self-defense. We've heard about a couple of investigations taking place. Uh, there's one in Israel, there's a UN-sponsored investigation, one from the Human Rights Council. Uh, but the question I, I want to ask you is, are the victims of this attack really seeing any justice from these investigations? Have you been asked to give testimony to any official investigation or to the UN? And do you think that the victims of this attack uh, will see justice? Actually, the investigation of the UN Human Rights Committee has finished and they gave recommendations and the conclusion, uh, one of the conclusions was that Israel deliberately killed the nine activists. Uh, and that it's illegally attacked the flotilla since we were in the international uh, water and Israel has no right to attack. No, not, not Israel, not any other state have the right to attack any ship while it is in the international uh, water. Uh, regarding Keterkel, the Israeli, the Israeli committee, till now they didn't invite me, but I accompanied other two uh, Arab uh, who were invited by Terkel, and it was amazing. They concentrated on the Israeli soldier who, who was injured. They didn't ask any question about the nine activists who were killed. They didn't ask any question about the violence of the Israeli soldiers. They didn't ask any question. They were not uh, interested in the uh, way the Israeli soldiers uh, treated the activists. Uh, and ha, 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 uh, in the way they were, in the violence, uh, the viola, violence of the Israeli soldiers, they just concentrated, as I said, on the Israeli soldiers who were injured. And they didn't hesitate, the members of this committee didn't hesitate to just uh, express their political uh, uh, views. They say, uh, we don't recommend the testimonies, the witnesses, the witnesses, mm -hmm. to say to use the word siege because Gaza not, is not on siege. Gaza is uh, under a blockade. Uh, no one, no Palestinians, uh, uh, no Pal the Palestinians doesn't uh, uh, suffer from lack of uh, food or lack of any humanitarian aid. So, uh, and that it was so legitimate for Israel to attack the flotilla. This was their statements while they were witnessing or investigating. Uh, uh, so the, those are the people who are charged, charged with doing the investigation yeah, yeah, and yeah, making yeah, those yeah. statements. And, 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 and they just, uh, they have a full accusation. It, it was very clear that they accusing, they are accusing the activists, they are accusing the flotilla, and they are not just, they don't, they, uh, don't uh, search or look for the facts, they are just look for the way to justify the Israeli attack. Thank you. Um, I just want to move on to, to uh, just because of the, uh, the time we have, uh, to talk about the uh, peace process and the negotiations just briefly. Um, what, where do you see the the peace process which uh, the United States has been sponsoring going. Do you think that there will be a two-state solution? Do you think Israel is serious about that? And if not, what is the alternative and what's your vision for um, the future of uh, Palestine? I live in... Uh, where I live, uh, I live inside Israel and I can say to you that there is uh, the Israeli uh, society and the Israeli parliament uh, doesn't, don't, doesn't feel the need for peace. There is no need uh, for peace. They don't see 
they don't perceive occupation as a problem. They don't perceive the siege as a problem. They don't perceive oppressing the Palestinians as a problem. And they don't pay the price of occupation or the price of siege. Uh, they are well coordinated. Uh, if security, security is what matters in Israel. And they solve the problem of security by, th by three Did tools, the siege, the wall, and the security coordination with the Palestinian police. The, so Palestinian, the authority. Palestinian authority. With the Palestinian authority. So uh, the, if, if Israel has solved this security problem, so the, they perceive peace as um, do, do you think they, they doesn't they, they doesn't perceive as I said a need for peace, but there is a need for negotiation. Do you think that uh, you, you, what you said is that Israel isn't paying the price for the occupation and yeah. for the other injustices? There is um, the. Solidar international solidarity uh, boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement that is growing. Has that been noticed in Israel? Is Israel starting to feel pressure from BDS, from some of the uh, boycotts that are happening around the world? Not yet. Not yet, but, but this is... I think that this kind of a campaign it has the power to rise uh, the debate inside the Israeli society and inside the Knesset and to give indication of isolation to the Israeli society and to the Israeli parliament. And this is very important because Israel is so sensitive to international criticism and to, interna and to a, a, a situation of isolation. So I think... A, a, the, to continue uh, this campaign uh, would have would have an effect on the Israeli society. Maybe now it's more on the margins. Maybe now it is not part of the. Uh, it doesn't affect so much the Israeli uh, economy, which is very uh, strong. But uh, I think this can, this at least can send a political message uh, to the Israelis that we cannot just continue with occupation and continue with the siege and with oppressing the Palestinian people without the Israeli society pay, paying uh, a price for uh, this. And this can at least arise a, a debate inside the Israeli society and mm. inside the Knesset. A final question. What What is it that you're fighting for? What's your vision for the country? What what would you what kind of country would you like to see for the people who live I in I am it? seeking for justice uh, and uh, equality for uh, the Palestinians uh, and I, I, I am struggling for uh, national and uh, national and civic uh, rights full national and civic equality uh, and this would not, uh, th we cannot implement this in the framework of a Jewish society. There is a contradiction, an internal a co a contradiction between being Jewish and being democratic in terms of the state. So we are struggling for a normal state, which is state for all of its citizens. Which, uh, uh, which the Palestinians and the Israeli uh, 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 Jewish uh, can have uh, full equality. I, I recognize uh, uh, a group, uh, religious and cultural and national group rights for the Israelis, but inside a democratic, a neutral state, not inside the Jewish state, because the Jewish state is, is not a slogan, it's a daily a racism and it's a daily oppression of the uh, Palestinians. It's also de facto and also de jure. When you say a Jewish society, then you can justify any discrimination against the Palestinians. Do you, do you think, if you were to predict five or ten years from now, do you think there will be a two-state solution? No, no, now the... Um, there is now no chance for two, two states. For the Netanyahu two states, yes, but for a sovereign and strong 
and the fully independent Palestinian state with East Jerusalem, and, the, uh, and after dismantling all the Israeli settlements, there is no chance, chance for uh, this two-state, uh, two-democratic state uh, solution. I think that reality goes more toward the one-state solution, whether a democratic one-state solution or a binational one-state solution. We're out of time. I wish I could talk to you much more, but thank you very much, Hanin Zobi. Thank you. Shukran.